I mean, I just kept going after my stroke. I, it didn't occur to me to slow down or stop because I was still able to sing. Hey, I'm Bill DeVille, and I'm here with Lucinda Williams. So nice to see you, Lucinda. Hi, thank you. Good to see you, too. So since the last we spoke, uh, you had a stroke, and that was about two years ago. First and foremost, how are you feeling? I feel fine. It's just every day is just, you know, I try to take it day to day. I've had a lot of rehab and physical therapy and all of that, so that's that's helped a lot. You're certainly staying staying busy. I mean, you have a, yeah. a brand new album on the way in June, and you have a brand new book too called "Don't Tell Anybody the Secrets I Told You." So was it was it was it therapeutic to write a book? Yeah, it was kind of therapeutic. I'd never done one before, so I was a, I was a little nervous about it at first, just because you know I didn't know how to get started with it really. But it's kind of like writing in a journal, except you have to be you have to make sure it's well written, you know, because people other people are going to read it. And did you keep a diary uh, over the years? I used to when I was younger, you know, when I was in my teens. But you know, this is stands apart from that mainly for the most biggest difference i think for me was you know you have to decide what you're going to include in the book and what you're going to leave out because you don't want to put every single detail in there <laughs> yeah how do you make the decision about what stays and it's like no i don't really want to go there well i mean that's part of the challenge of doing a book i guess you know is making those decisions i guess i just looked at it as if as if I were reading it, you know, how would I feel if I read a certain thing? Or, and, yeah. and who might be reading the book? You know, what age might this person be? And, you know, someone in their teens or, you know, maybe one of my aunts might read it. How am I going to feel? You know, what would she feel like if she read, you know, this particular thing or something? You know, I didn't want to offend anyone. Yeah. Do you, do you think you succeeded? Yeah, I, d I think I did. <laughs> yeah. Now, in, in the book, you mentioned that, uh, you know, the, when you recorded Essence here in the Twin Cities. What do you remember about, uh, about the whole process of the Essence album and recording it here in, in the Twin yeah. Cities? The first thing that comes to mind always, of course, when I think about Minneapolis and St. Paul is the weather, you know, the, snow, the cold I'd never been there before, and I actually drove up there from Nashville. In your Silverado you mentioned in the book. Yeah, mm -hmm. in my Silverado pickup truck. I had just met and was getting to know the artist Bo Ramsey, and he was working with me on the Essence album and co-producing, and we were trying to decide what studio we were going to go into and where we wanted to work and who we wanted to work with and all that. And he had done a lot of work with Tom Tucker at Master Mix mm -hmm. Studios up there. And so Bo Ramsey actually was the one who suggested working at Tom Tucker Studio in Minneapolis. And we brought in uh, Charlie Sexton came in to help out on it. And I was really lucky because I got to use uh, some of the guys who were working with Bob Dylan and Neil Young, like Jim Keltner came in and played drums and Tony Garnier was on bass and Charlie Sexton on guitar and Bo Ramsey on guitar also. That's quite a, it's quite a band. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was quite a band. <laughs> when I first, very first went, got there, I stayed at Peter Jesperson was, kind of the host of the thing, of the, you know. And so he put me up at his house. And so I got to be friends with, I got, I became friends with Peter Jesperson. And I just remember when I first got out of the car, when I very first got there and how cold it was, 
I wasn't prepared, really. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But then I, I adjusted to it over time. I remember you had the song that you wrote. It wasn't on, on the Essence album, but you wrote a song called Minneapolis, and it seemed yeah. like it was it was written <laughs> about, uh, about a cold day in the yeah. Twin Cities. Yeah, I wrote that shortly after the I'd been there recording. Well, let's talk about the new album. I'm so curious about uh, the new album, Stories from a Rock and Roll Heart. So did it feel good to be back in the recording studio and making a new album? Yeah, it did. I mean, I just kept going after my stroke. I, it didn't occur to me to slow down or stop because I was still able to sing. And I felt like I'd made enough progress physically to be able to get in the, go to the studio. And, you know, we started doing a few shows and, and it worked out fine. And I mean, I wasn't able to play guitar, which was a real drag. Yeah. Um. But the band, you know, I still have a really good band. I always manage to get good musicians around me. You've never had a problem with that, have you? Right. (laughs) No. I've been lucky in that regard. So I've got some good guys now I'm working with, and, you know, they've got my back. So who do you got playing with you now? Is it uh, it people like Buddy Miller and and, uh, Tommy Stenson? Angel Olsen, I saw, all appeared on your album. Yeah. Angel Olsen came in as, you know, as a guest artist. Yeah. And did some vocals on this one song. And the same with Tommy Stinson. He came in as a guest artist on a song. Well, some of the guys play in my touring band who are on the album. Mm-hmm. Like Stuart Mathis is on guitar. Yeah. And he used to be, he was a guitarist and he was in The Wallflowers with Jacob Dylan. Yeah. So he's in the band, and my drummer, Butch Norton, who is also my touring drummer, he's he's in the studio with me, and David Sutton, the bass player, and David tours with me, and he's also in the studio with me. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have some of the the guys who are, are on the road with me also recording in the studio. It's good to have that i think yeah so has your has your songwriting process changed since, yeah. since the stroke yeah yeah it has i mean what it opened me up to collaborating actually with other people you know which was it's been kind of fun um for me i never really wanted to get into to doing that that much but you know um it's the co-writing thing Mm -hmm. because when i first moved to nashville everybody wanted just trying to set me up with someone to write with well that that's how they do it in nashville that's how they do it yeah yeah and sometimes they'll have five or six people working on one song you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) which always kind of amazed me you know because it's it's hard to write that personal of a song if there are that many people working on it yeah but you know, and most of the songs I was hearing that were being written that like, that way weren't. I didn't think were that good. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was really leery of it. But then I realized after I I tried it with the right people, I realized that's the big issue with it is it's got to be the right people you're working with. You know, so. My husband, Tom Overby, who's from Minneapolis, right. he, we started working on stuff together. Cause I, and it was just kind of an organic process. We didn't really sit down and say, okay, let's write a song together. It was more like I would be working on something, and then he would come up with some ideas for a song and show me. And, you know, he'd write these lines down, and, and I would read them, and they were good, you know? So yeah. I would either use them in a song I was working on or I'd start a new song with them. And I would edit the lyrics a little bit maybe and I'd come up with the melody and the arrangement and all that. But a lot of the ideas for different songs came from Tom and like the Hums Liquor song and Let's Get the Band Back Together. And, um, and then the other person who got involved writing with me was Jesse 
Mallon. Yeah. Who's based in New York. And he really, he helped add this rock and roll element to things, you know, because that's what he does. He's a, you know, rock and roller. Yeah. East New York, East Coast rock and roller. So he would fly in from New York and stay with us for a few days. And we'd, you know, Jesse and I would work on some stuff or Jesse and Tom and, and I would work on stuff. So is it the three of you then that did the song New York Comeback? Yeah. That wrote it? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about that song. I I love the track. It's amazing. Yeah, thank you. Um, I really like that one too. And now I can't remember who brought that in initially, but I think it was Jesse. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Being the New Yorker that he is, you know. Yeah. But or it might have been Tom initially and then Jesse added a bunch of stuff to it. I'm not sure. I'm sorry. I can't remember, but that's how close we were working together. You know, it's, yeah. it's actually a good thing that I'm not sure who brought that in. Um, but you know, Jesse definitely helped on that one with the, the general vibe of it, you know, and the, I think I wrote the melody, or I wrote it with Jesse, maybe. Who, whose idea was it to uh, to call Bruce and Patty? Okay, I'm pretty sure Tom brought that up because he's always been a he's a huge Bruce Springsteen fan, and he just thought initially he thought it was just kind of a dream, you know, to have the idea of having Bruce come in. Yeah. He said, "Wow, wouldn't that be great?" And Jesse said something like. I think I can get a hold of him. I think I can get a hold of his people because Jesse knows everybody. <laughs> you yeah. know, he's just one of these, he's one of these movers and shakers. And, you know, he gets, people call him informally call Jesse Mallon, the mayor of Greenwich village <laughs> <laughs> or the mayor of the East side. <laughs> You know, I love it because he I knows mm-hmm. he's always got something going on and he knows everybody, you know. So he did, he jumped in and he got a hold of, managed to track down Bruce and his wife Patty. And they said yes, that they would love to do it. And they weren't able to come into the studio with us, but we sent them the tracks and they put their vocals on. Oh, the wonders of modern technology, right? huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the other song that, that uh, this title really caught my eye because I lived right by there. It was a couple hundred feet from Hum's Liquor. What, really? How did, yeah, I lived, uh, basically, I was at Hum's Liquor's on the corner of Lindale and 22nd. I was at Aldrich and, and 22nd. So basically, the parking lot was in between, you know, my apartment and, and Hum's Liquor's. So what was the inspiration behind the song? Well, that's interesting that you said that because it leads right to the inspiration and the inspiration was that tom overby lived right i mean y'all could have been next door neighbors i don't know yeah we could have been the way that the way tom's described it is every morning he would get up to go to work and he would look out of his window and he could see bob stinson walking to this liquor store and that became the inspiration for that song it's 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 really kind of an ode to Bob Stinson. It's not meant to be judgmental or anything like that, you know. Because Tommy came in and sang and and contributed to the track, and he was really moved. Yeah, we love Tommy around here. He's, he's been a good friend of the oh, station yeah. for years, and he's yeah, he's yeah, Tommy's great. an awesome guy. Yeah, yeah. So I noticed, you know, so many of your songs. You have a song called Minneapolis. You have Holmes Liquor. And there's, you know, the New York song. So many of your songs are, you know, about a kind of a place, a sense of place. Why, why is that a, that way in your music? I guess it's because, I mean, I think that it gives the song more color. Yeah. You know, to, to talk about, you know, the name of a town or the name of a city. And, you know, it's like a photograph and without having to... You know, you can just, if you say the name of a certain town or place, yeah. people, you know, automatically know what that means, you know, they if they've been there before, you know, like Minneapolis, you mentioned that it just immediately, a photograph pops up in people's heads, 
you know, so it kind of helps set the stage for the other part of the song, I think. Yeah. It just makes it more interesting. And you have a song called Lake Charles. Yeah. That's where you grew up, huh? What, what was that like? That's where I was born. Yeah. I didn't actually grow up there the whole... I didn't spend all of my childhood there, but I was born in Lake Charles, and then I, I grew up mostly in New Orleans, Baton Rouge and New Orleans. I spent my teenage years in New Orleans. So you've had a long career. You just wrote a book. You got another album coming out. And I heard you got another batch of songs that uh, you got started for another possible new album in 2024. Yeah, we had some, you know, we didn't want to put cram too many songs on one album. But, you know, the songs get written and then we go in and record and then sit and look at them and decide, you know, what's which ones are going to make the album you know, it depends on how they come out. Yeah. You don't always know that until after you've already recorded. So a lot of times we end up with extra tracks, you know, so we save those for the next release. Uh, here's one for you. Willie Nelson just turned 90 years of age. And, wow. Yeah, isn't that that's crazy? Right. I forgot it was, he just had a birthday. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about that's Willie. Amazing. Yeah, tell me about Willie. I bet you've been a fan forever, haven't you? <laughs> Yeah, and I've done some shows with them. I've met with them and talked with them a little bit. He's real quiet, though. You know, he's kind of almost kind of shy. Yeah. You know, when you meet him. But very, he always has this gentle way about him. Mm hmm You know, it's very kind, very gentle, um, very youthful. Yeah. Speaking of 90. <laughs> 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 That's a good way to start it off when you said he just turned 90 and then asked me about Willie. And that says a lot right there that he just turned 90. I yeah. Mean, yeah. That's that's Willie right there. You know, just he's out there d still, you know, doing what he's always done at the age of 90. Yeah. That that's that speaks volumes about his who he is, you know. What was it like recording uh, Live Forever with him, that uh, Billy Joe Shaver song that you guys recorded about a year and a half ago? Well, that that was the track was recorded already, and I added my vocal to it. I, I worked on that with Charlie Sexton. He, Charlie was the one who, got, who contacted me, and I was going to be in Austin, Texas anyway. I was going to be there, and I was there, and... So Charlie set it up, and I went in the studio and added my vocal to that track, and it was great. I mean, I love Billy Joe Shaver. That I, I really enjoyed doing that. Yeah, I bet. So what haven't you done in your career yet? You've done so many things. <laughs> well, I haven't been in a movie, but I don't really want... I'm not interested <laughs> in that. I'm too shy. I'm way too shy to think about acting. Yeah. I mean, I've been asked to do a couple of those kinds of things, but I'm always very reticent and very shy about it, you know, so none, nothing like that's ever come to fruition. I guess I mentioned that because, well, there's a handful of actors who also have bands and, you know, or at least try to be musicians. <laughs> yeah. And then there's, you know, a handful of musicians who try to be actors so it kind of crosses, it's been overlapping a lot. Yeah. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, so nice uh, chatting with you, Lucinda. Yeah, you too. Mm -hmm. Lucinda Williams will be in the Twin Cities for some shows. I see you have four dates at the Dakota, the 25th, 26th, 28th, and 29th of July. We'll see you at least one of them. Yeah, and I love the Dakota. and I like going there to see artists. It's a, it's a nice place. It's, it's very artist-oriented. Yeah, it's a good you know. spot. Mm -hmm. Take care. You too. Take care. Mm -hmm. Yep. The Current is public media made possible thanks to member support.